So we've discussed the fact that patients with COPD have less activity. What's the impact of that reduced activity on other outcomes of patients with COPD? We'll be discussing that in this module. So Rich, patients are short of breath, they have low activity. Uh, is that bad for them? Well, we've always thought that patients' fitness really determined how well they did in the long term. But we're rethinking that. We think really it's more probably the level of activity they have that determines their long-term prognosis. There's been a couple of studies that have really changed our mind about that in the last few years. They found out that the activity level was the best predictor, even better than lung function, even better than all the other measurements we could make. This was the best predictor of whether they would die, whether they would be hospitalized, and other outcomes as well. So what comes first? So activity is related to lung function and shortness of breath. You know, does the shortness of breath and lung function then lead to reduced activity? Or does the reduced activity lead to worse lung function and more shortness of breath? Well, it, it, as, as I think we found, it's unclear the, the, the relationship between dyspnea and activity level. There's not a linear relationship. It's a very loose relationship. So it's, we can't predict low activity levels depending on dyspnea or even lung function. Bruce, uh, do patients, uh, how, how much do they really tell us what they're doing? How much do we have to probe for that? Well, you've got to ask the right questions. And patients may not volunteer that information, although most patients are willing to tell you whether they're active or not. And you want to get very specific with questions about, on a typical day, how much activity are you engaged in? Do you go outside and walk? Are you going up and down stairs? Do you do any deliberate exercise, like ride a bicycle or get on a treadmill? Those are really important questions because then patients will reveal something that may not come up unless you ask. Is there some uh, discussion we can have, uh, maybe different for each patient, those patients that don't go to the store, well, why don't you? Asking the patient, what are your goals? What do you want to do? What have you given up doing that you want to do now? I think that that's actually the, really the point, Barry. You need to find out what the patient is, would like to do and then encourage them to do it. I think a question, I agree with you, and a question that's good to ask patients is, what have you stopped doing or what have you given up doing that you used to enjoy doing? Because they may not be that far away from being able to do it. Going for a walk, uh, swimming, exploring what they were doing, moving them back to that is not only increasing their physical activity and therefore their health, but psychologically it really feels good to find out you can do more than you've been doing. So I often find it's not easy to ask patients what they've given up, what they want to do. I think it takes some time to do this, and we need to have time to engage patients in that discussion. I had a new patient the other day, and the patient was overweight and very inactive, wasn't sitting around the house, and that's about all he did. It took me five minutes to say, what do you want to do? He said, I want to lose weight and exercise. And, and exercise. I said, well, yeah, but why do you want to do that? So it turned out at the end of the discussion, he wants to go fishing and hunting. But it took a while to draw that out of the patient. Perfect, because you're describing a patient-centered goal. That's important to that patient emotionally in their life. If you're not engaged in the discussion and spend enough time having that discussion, you won't get there and you'll miss a great opportunity. Is there any standard way to ask patients? Well, so, you know, I, you gave a good example of it, that taking the time to find out what's important to that patient, limit, linking that to physical activity level. Well, if the patient says, I used to fish a lot, I find I can't do it anymore. You can't do it anymore? Really? Do you, do you know that actually it might be possible, but at first we might have to get you being more active physically? It, would that be important to you? What we want is for that patient to agree, to have that patient tell you a goal and agree that that would be important. Now the physical activity makes sense. If you just said, I want you to go to pulmonary rehabilitation three times a week, why do I want to do that? Oh, I, this might get me doing some things that I used to enjoy doing or I'd like to do again. That's one link to their motivation. So we need to engage our patients. That's really key here. Let me ask both of you a question. When you see patients in the clinic with COPD and you know those times where you do see a patient has started to be more active and to get more exercise, are there other reasons they do it that you see coming up that, you know, I want to be able to go shopping or I want to be able to work in my garden? Are there some common examples of why people are willing to make that effort? So I think one of them is the age of these patients is they all have children or grandchildren. So a common one is you know, once you get to this point in the discussion, I want to play with my grandchildren and I can't do that now. Or I want to live long enough to see my daughter married. 
So there are a variety of things that differ in all patients, but I do find that uh, family, things with, events with their family, what they can do with their family is important activities for them.